And that is eventually in 2018, where we saw Arslan play me for the first time. Nobody wanted to accept it, but I made this video specifically because I wanted to show people who didn't really know the game too well that it wasn't a fluke. You have access to all these strong players. Like, you know, Joker was saying that if you wanted to play versus a certain matchup, there'll be a top player that'll be, they'll just turn up and play. The way you train your reactions, because he had cracked reactions as well, mm -hmm. is you go to practice mode, you set a move, like let's say Asuka down one plus two. You set the computer to do it, a hundred, like to just, just do it raw and then just block it a hundred times. Traditionally in esports, Korea is seen as the number one region, regardless of the era or the game you're playing. And Tekken is not really an exception. From Tekken Tag 1 to Tekken 5, 6, Tag 2, 7, Korea has always dominated the world. And it's been, you know, not exclusive. Japan produces world-class talent. America has world-class talent. Europe has world-class talent. But Korea seems to consistently just be that region. Until Arslan Ash's dominance in Tekken 7. He won four EVO titles, and the Tekken World Tour 2024 Championship, the final Tekken 7 tournament in the world. And when Arslan first came to fame, he wasn't alone. He said, oh, I'm not even the best one in Pakistan. And suddenly a bunch of players who were able to get visas were traveling and dominating tournaments outside of Pakistan. It seemed to come from almost out of nowhere and people had no idea what was going on. I had the chance to interview Spag, a commentator from the UK who is also Pakistani. If you haven't heard of Spag, you must be new. He is a very, very prolific commentator and community figurehead. He's done a lot for the Tekken community. Um, and he has gotten the chance to travel to Pakistan to hang out with Arslan Ash and just generally understand more of the history than I could as someone just sitting in the US. So I got him on for a call. Uh, it's going to be, again, a bit of a longer call. There's timestamps for all the topics. Uh, like with all my long form content, it is a bit hard to produce these uh, and to get them, well, to do it consistently. So please leave a like and comment if you're enjoying this kind of content. It helps me to continue to make more. And if you would consider subscribing as well, uh, that would help me out a ton. As you can see, um, three in or four in ten people are actually subscribed. So it would help me out a ton if you were able to do that. And I uh, hope you enjoy the video. What's good, ladies and lads? Today, I'll be joined by Spag TK, famous commentator for the Tekken scene and someone who's very familiar with the Pakistani Tekken scene as well. I want to get educated on the history. I figured I'd just leave up some Pakistani gameplay in the background uh, while I do that. So here's that gameplay. Let me call him right now. Let's see what's going on. Yo. Yo, what's up, Spag? Welcome. What's good, man? How you doing? Good, good, good. Thank you for uh, hopping on. No, no worries, man. Yeah. No worries. Um, yeah, so I don't have a good structure for anything I was going to ask, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I basically, uh, I, I'm kind of, you know, I'm a Tekken 7 kid, so I, I came in, I mean, I've played the other games, obviously, but more or less my esports knowledge starts at Arslan exploding onto the scene in his so, uh, so his when did you start Tekken 7? I started Tekken 7 uh right as it came out I was playing law they released Noctis okay. I played him for like a month and then oh. I just started playing League of Legends again so I didn't really compete or get involved until I would say 2019 2020 oh okay oh, ah, I see I see all right so like basically when Arslan started to join the scene Evo and all yeah that stuff. exactly so I came uh -huh. in at the time and I've pieced together some small things talking to other people I've heard from the past that like you know he had been to tournaments before that wasn't necessarily his first big tournament like people knew his name but certainly mm -hmm. to the mainstream he was a brand new face right uh, yeah 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 definitely um yeah, we got uh, well. Okay, yeah, we got a lot to talk about then. I, okay. I didn't know that you started in twenty nineteen. I think a lot of people did actually. There's a lot of people that I spoke to that started in um, around that same time as well. That was actually for me the golden year of of Tekken, and it wasn't just because of Pakistan. I just think that it was it was like the game was in a good place. I think competitively we were kind of getting used to Tekken World Tour now. Um, we had an idea of who was doing really well, and I travelled all over the gaff as well. I went everywhere. It was it was a good year, man. Yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah. phenomenal. Um, yeah. yeah, so I guess, can you tell me a bit about more of that, I guess, mm. the golden year of Tekken 7? This was season two, the Kazumi season? Yeah, so, okay, so 20, 20 okay, so I'll, I'll start with, many people probably don't know when Arslan kind of first, um, you know, got onto the scene, type mm -hmm. of thing, internationally, right? Right, right. Um, so there was actually a tournament in Malaysia. Okay. Um, and obviously at this point, you know, I know that, um, 
the, obviously I've known for a long time that Pakistan is really strong at Tekken and I've been watching them, you know, play tag two. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we had a player called Asim who you might've heard of. Uh, How can he I spell was, that? I, A-S-I-M. Oh, Asim. Asim, okay. Asim was one of our strongest players. Uh, he was the best in Europe for a long time, European champion, but he was actually from, he's actually from Pakistan and oh. he was the Pakistani champion. And having spoken to, um, having spoken to like Arslan and Bilal and all these guys, I was like, okay, so who was the best in Tekken Six? You know, when you know, when Tekken Six, was there? and and they agreed, yeah, Asim was the best. He was beating all of us. Him, Asim, and a guy called Awais Liakut. They were the best in Tekken Six, uh, to the point where Asim was telling me stories about how him and Awais would be on one side of the arcade, and the rest of the arcade would be on the other side, and he'd they they take them out. Wow, who so, was the other champion? How do I spell his name? His name is Awais. I'm going to type in the chat. Yeah. Should okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Me? That's perfect. That'll save Awais. a lot of time for me. And how do you spell that? How do you spell that? How do you spell that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, wait, this is his name. And he's actually playing now too. Okay. Um, you might have seen him if you watched the takedown event. He doesn't play a lot, but he got he, I think he got top eight and he beat C, he almost beat CBM. He was that final final pixel. Incredible. Guy's really, really good at Tekken. Yeah. Um anyway, Asim moved to um to London in two thousand eight or something like that. I don't know. And there were tournaments, which you can see on YouTube, actually. If you mm-hmm. go to YouTube and you write Tekken London, one word, you will find these videos of him of him playing. No one knew who this guy is. We think, obviously, in London, yo, we're sick, man. Yo, Tekken London, bro, come. Who's this new guy? Who's this Pakistani guy, bro? Yeah. This man took out all of our top players, <laughs> Starscream, Dinosaur, all the legends. They rigged the bracket to try and get him to play against our top players, and he didn't care. He played... Eddie, Miguel, Bob, he just he cycled through his characters and just destroyed everybody in London. And London this was Tekken was, 6? This is Tekken 6, and you can watch those on YouTube. They're on YouTube. And um, we're like, what the fuck, man? What's going on? Like, who, who's this guy, man? Um, and everyone was shocked because, like, you know, at this point, we're thinking, like, yeah, damn, we're, we're the best. You know, Ryan Hart, Dinosaur, like, we're really good, but right. they, they, he's beating over. And what this guy would do is he would enter, he would take, so you'd get like an arcade stick, 200 pounds, and a trophy for winning. Uh-huh. He'd take the money and he'd throw the trophy in the bin. <laughs> he didn't care. He, he kept winning every week, so he would just throw the trophy away. Go, I don't want this, and he just take the money, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so, and then, and that's when he told us that. By the way, you think I'm the best? I'm not the best in Pakistan. No way. <laughs> there's a guy, there's guys there better than us. Okay. And we're like, okay, so imagine now the people in Europe or UK specifically, we know that Pakistan is ridiculous at this game, okay, okay. because of Asim. Now, the rest of the world doesn't know. And, uh, you know, I've met Asim. I'm, I, I live close to him. You know, we're good friends. Nice. Uh, Asim actually uh, competed Tekken World Tour 2017, 18, a lot. The reason okay. why you probably haven't like heard of him too much is because you started in 2019. Right. But actually, he was um, very close to qualifying uh, for Tekken World Tour multiple times, he just wasn't able to because he had a Pakistani passport. Yeah, he wasn't able to travel to some tournaments. <laughs> but um, you know, he's still really good, and he went to versus fighting last year and beat Anakin. You know, oh my goodness, he, okay, he okay. Put, put him in, put him into losers, and the guy doesn't even play the game. You know, yeah, Asim's really good. So yeah, like he's still playing, and he says he wants to play Tekken Eight as well. But yeah, um, yeah, that was that the versus fighting last year. You know, it was I think it was for top eight. Um, in in winners, I think winners quarters, he beat he beat Anakin, and you know the, the guy the guy's just really good. And so, so he just says he said to me a long time ago, I don't lose to Jack because you know we had so many Jacks in Pakistan in Tekken six and five and stuff. Like I don't lose to Jacks, and he, I, it, there was a whole thing like there's a tournament that I ran with someone called Lions Den, which was the biggest tournament in Tag Two in Europe, and uh, we tried to get people excited to watch it by getting you know some call outs you know some drama and As- asim actually called that anakin that video is also on youtube <laughs> and i was like who's this asim dude man and like bronson was like oh you guys suck <laughs> and anakin's like i don't know why you're calling me out you know <laughs> and this the whole thing because people don't really know each other that well right. in tech and tag two you know from america and europe one of my goals in tech and seven was to try and bridge the gap between usa and eu yeah. and you know i think i, d- I, d- I actually I feel like i did that you know oh absolutely like, you know, with the as, EU versus NA brief as well, you know, that was part of that journey of kind of bringing us together, you know. Um, but yeah, like it was funny to see that match actually happen last year, right? Between Asim and Anakin, yeah, you know, because there was a whole beef between them, like in tag two. And um, I remember watching very recently at the uh, the New Orleans finals, the at the local before where uh, uh, Atif played Jack, 
and I was like, this, this mm. looks very like, like, like it looks so, it looks so natural, right? Like I'd never seen the Jack before, of course. Right. And then yeah. seeing that come out, I'm like, oh, this is, this is really, really cool to see. This is, this is incredible. So that little bit of lore uh, checks out, yeah. I guess. Jack in Pakistan yeah. is and everywhere, right? Yeah. If you go to, yeah, if you, again, like the, f what's fine, uh, we'll, there's a lot to talk about actually, but um, I'll, I'll, I won't, I won't jump too much because it'll get confusing. But yeah, Atif playing Jack, you know, this guy's Mokujin, man. Like I, when I went to Pakistan, I was able to beat a lot of people. Like they, they weren't really ready for my Eddie, but mm -hmm. uh, there was a few people that I obviously couldn't beat. And that was one was, was Arslan, obviously. Like, well, with him, I, at least I got a few games. Um, and I, you know, I do pretty well. I do, I do okay against Arslan, but of um, Dawood and Atif were the two guys that just beat the shit out of me, man. Like <laughs> th those guys, man. Like, every time I was a mid, uh, like a pixel away from beating Dawood, like he would just make a comeback. I, d I just didn't know how to beat him. Um, Atif is a special player as well. He's ridiculous. I heard he's doing super good right now in Pakistan as well. So yeah, I feel like Tekken him. Eight will fit his style so well. When I fought him, I fought him very briefly, uh, also mm. in New Orleans. Uh, I fought his Akuma, and uh, I felt really lucky. I pulled out a 5-4 against the Akuma, and then he switched to Steve, and like I think he 5-0'd me. I didn't get a round. <laughs> yeah, the guy, the guy is ridiculous, man. He's but, incredible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? Okay, so Tekken 6, you know, these guys were the best. And so we, we heard about Pakistan a long time ago. Um, then, you know, there's a tournament uh, called OUG. OUG OU Gaming. It's OU a Dubai gaming. tournament. When was OU this? Gaming. Uh, now this, this is the thing that's used to happen throughout Tag 2, but then they also okay. started doing, they were doing tournaments in Tekken 7 as well. Gotcha. Um, OU Gaming is, is um, it was one of the first tournaments really where I would see people getting flown to. You know, I know Ru Kang went there often. I think the main man got flown there one time as well. He was doing commentary for one of them. Oh, so this was and... like one of those big <laughs> esports things. <laughs> it was, it was... It was like, see, the thing is, in, in Tekken Tag 2, there wasn't really any like big, like esports type of event apart from MLG and Tekken 6, you know. I see. Apart from that and Evo, there wasn't really anything that was like super, like, you know, gamers 8 type of, type of vibes, you know. It was just of a course, tournament yeah. that happened in a hotel, ballroom, like a lot of tournaments in, in America as well, like Final Round and Got you. Um, all the other tournaments. They would usually happen in these hotel ballrooms. And this was another one, right? So it was just your standard tournament, but it was it was cool because. There wasn't many, and it was one in Dubai, which was which was new for for us to watch, you know. And but because it's in Dubai, all of a sudden now you can get Pakistanis to go down, and that's ah. when I first saw Bilal. I think Bilal was one of the guys I saw go down to to that tournament, and I was like, wow, this guy's really good. And obviously Koreans were there too. Um, and that is eventually in 2018 where we saw Arslan play Ni for the first time, ah. and at an OU Arslan, gaming event, at an OU gaming event. It was a 2018 OU gaming. And that video is if I if you check my YouTube, I did an analysis of his match with me, and I'll that was from that right event. Now. Yeah, um, and that 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 video did quite well. You know, people were like, "Whoa, this is competitive Tekken!" Like, I, I'm I'm really lazy with YouTube. I'm not really like consistent with it, but everyone kept on asking me to do more. Like, but the the video is called like "How Arslan Beat Me," and th and by the way, is at this point no one was accepting that Arslan was good. They were like, "No, it was lucky. It was a fluke." Oh, blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nobody wanted to accept it, but I made this video specifically because I wanted to show people who didn't really know the game too well that it wasn't a fluke. This guy really knows how to play versus Steve and Devil Jin, and he's just very fundamentally strong, you know? Yeah. And then I guess people looked at it and they were like, whoa, you know, I didn't know all of this was happening in the game, you know? Talking about like, you know, fuzzy guarding and, and you know, you can see how Arslan sidestep ducks and does while standing two to beat a back one and whiff. Right, right. And I said to Arslan, I said, how did you punish that? People were saying that you were whiff punishing. He goes, no, I was just, I just read he was going to do back one, so I just sidestep and duck and was oh he did on a read oh yeah he does it because you can't punish it on one with right, right, straight whiff. reaction right, it's, yeah. it's way too it's way too difficult back yeah. one has like crazy recovery so he, imagine kazumi's was on two is 18 frames yeah he yeah. punished back one in this video you can see he does a sidestep left and duck and this is the first time a lot of people have seen our slam yeah a lot of people but again it wasn't a big event um and people were making excuses for me saying you know ah, oh, it's because he was upset he was sad that his trophies got broken at the green arcade and they were just making a ton oh, of tons different... of you know stories and yeah, scenarios a lot of yeah. excuses but this actually was the first event that people saw him. if and if it wasn't evil japan because people i guess most most people watch, would watch him at evil japan mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this was the first event actually where they played um 
so yeah, uh, that that's that's cool. But then there's also uh, the guy I told you about before, Oasis Liaka. He was actually the first one to play internationally at a tournament called WCG World Cyber Games, which used to happen back in Tekken Six. Uh, and um, yes, I yeah, remember he, the name WCG. Yeah. Which do you know which year he was competing? I, I don't know. I'll have to check. Okay. But the, what's funny is that um, that tournament had really weird rules. It was done by people who won FGC, right? Yeah. So Oasis Liaka actually went down there and. Um, he chose uh i think he he chose a character uh, in the first stages of the tournament to play because he played a lot of characters right mm -hmm. and when he tried to when when he won and he went to the next game the next match next next round he tried to pick his main and they said no you can't this is character locked oh. so it's the stupidest rule ever it's a character locked tournament so he ended up losing but it's because he he didn't have the character that he wanted you know right. like it's 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 stupid. I think that might have actually been the start of seeing Pakistani Tekken, you know. Had he gotten to play his main the whole time. Had he gotten to play his main and, and you know, that might have been the break of the Pakistan, but he didn't get to, unfortunately. So. That is so unfortunate. It's, it's pretty sad, yeah, but, you know, it is what it is, but uh, things worked out in the end anyway. But, yeah, um, that's just a little yeah bit of information to know and a lot of the stuff I t um, that i find out either from talking to pakistanis i find out from them or from asim because he just he knows everything you know he's a, he's a part of he was a pakistani champion <clears throat> knows a lot so this is the kind of information i'm giving you but yeah, yeah um yeah this this tournament here oug was where we first saw him and then he pe uh, beat me steve quite convincingly yeah um and then he went and he switched to devil Jin. And then he beat his devil gen, so it was 2 0 for Arslan here. And then yeah. in the grand finals, he just didn't know what to do, so he picked Claudio. So Ni got the grand finals um, and, and had to face Arslan, but he played Claudio and then he lost 3 0. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why he did that. <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, that, this is the first time we see it. And he is part of V Slash. You see, V Slash, you know, big part of you know, Arslan's rise here because you know, they, they trusted him. They're like, they obviously know that Pakistan is really strong. V Slash is also based in Dubai. Okay. So, okay. you know, getting these Pakistanis, I think OUG this this tournament is was was very important to the to Pakistanis getting out there. You know, right. Um, and this and is it doesn't happen now. It doesn't happen now. But the the organizers are still around. I see. So, yeah. and this is before or after that Malaysia tournament you said uh, Arslan was at. This is actually before. Oh, okay. So after this is after there after. was a Malaysia tournament. So, I tried to find the tweet yeah, but it's funny because uh, actually I think it was after. I'm not sure yeah. I think it was after. Okay, that would make yeah. Okay, yeah, I think so. I'm not sure. It might have been before though. I have to find out. But there was a tweet from because uh, I knew that Bilal and Arslan had gone here to that to that Malaysia tournament. Okay, and um, I saw a tweet from Juna because he was there too, saying, oh. "Bro, there's this Pakistani guy beating the shit out of all the Korean Japanese players <laughs> in first attempts." And I'm like, "That's Arslan. That has to be Arslan." <laughs> so I tweeted, "I'm like, this has got to be Arslan." I'm trying to find the tweet because I know Juna tweeted, "He's like, dude, there's this Pakistani guy right now." In the casuals before this tournament, beating everyone, he just beat he just beat John Ding 10 0. Jeez. He just beat this guy, like, <clears throat> and so and I, I, in my head, I'm looking at that tweet and I'm like, Yeah, that's that's gotta be Arslan, right? I think I yeah. made a tweet as well. Um, uh, then in the tournament, I think Bilal got top eight, but mm. Arslan got ninth. He okay. actually played Nobi and loses, lost, uh, beat his Steve really badly, then lost to his Dragonov two straight ah uh, this was so, so so i'm looking at this ou gaming one this is season one right with the orange health bars it might be season one yeah I'm, I'm, i have to think oh look they're on the camera oh my goodness <laughs> yeah you see <laughs> oh yeah yeah so noctis and geese <clears throat> and uh there's no blue health bar yet i think that's like so pre wall mouth or something was that season two blue i think i think this is season did they change the health bars in season two does my chat know i think when I think of season two, I think of the blue purple. So I see the orange and I'm like, oh, this must be season one. But mm. um, yeah, I'm hang on. What's for Arslan messaging me right now? Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it might have been season one. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, okay. It was, it's, it's much funny as well because um, because people People did, did, like were really downplaying Kazumi. Um, actually, it, I have to find out when this event was OU Gaming because I know that 2018 Tekken World Tour Finals, which was in December, uh, I think 
players had dropped Kazumi because um, they dropped Kazumi because of the season two changes. Ah. In season one, she was like, you know, I know that one guy, Take. Take was a Kazumi player in season one, uh, Take from Japan. He dropped Kazumi in, for the Tekken World Tour Finals and started playing Paul. And then as soon as Arslan won Evo Japan, everyone went back to Kazumi. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird. People really, they don't re- really know characters too well unless they see tournament results with them. Yes. I think people need to stop looking at tournament results and start using their brains when it comes to character strength. And I completely unfortunately, agree. Unfortunately, not many people do that. Yeah. <laughs> and so if Ta- I was saying, man, if Take just used Kazumi, he would have done really well. But he switched to Paul and lost. And now when Arslan won with season two Kazumi, everyone's like, well, Kazumi is strong. So much Kazumi is OP. <laughs> But before they were like, oh, she's weak now, she's broke, she's done now, season mm. two, she's dead. Oh, it's whatever. But yeah, uh, I think this might have been season two. I'm not sure. We'll have to see if gotcha. someone knows about this. Yeah. Season two is blue purple. Okay, we'll see. Um, either way, he won this He won this event and then uh, Malaysia, ninth place, losing to Nobi. Um, but then, yeah, Evo Japan, you know, that was the event. So Arslan, um, at this point, I haven't really spoke to him, but Asim told me, in tag two um word for word he said to me hassan if if people if if arslan this guy arslan this kid if he plays versus the koreans he will beat them yeah. now half of me was was thinking he's he's uh this is in tag two he told me uh-huh. half of me is believing do you know what i don't i don't believe you because the <laughs> koreans were so dominant in tag two jcr yeah. literally literally won everything that he was, was their untouchable. game that was their game that was their game yeah <clears throat> so i was like i don't believe you you know but the other half of me is Asim doesn't lie. He doesn't exaggerate. He doesn't. He doesn't oversell. He does, he hardly even rates people. Mm-hmm. He's not the type of person to say, "Oh, this guy's good." You know, he'll just say, "Oh, you know." He won't. He won't be arrogant. But he'll just be like, "I don't think this guy's that good." You know, but he's he kind of it, it takes a lot for him to rate someone. So if, when he said that, I'm like, "Well, this guy must be serious, man." Right. Like, shit, you telling me this guy's gonna be Korean? And of course, now we know what happened. You know, he yeah. wasn't lying. He wasn't. Te- he wasn't. You know, bullshitting. And that's why I really, whenever he tells me something, I really listen. You know, mm-hmm. if he tells me he'll beat Anakin, but and he's not, he's not worried because it's 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 Jack and whatever, and he goes and does it. Like this guy backs up his words, you know. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. So that that was that was interesting. And then e- Evo Japan. So before Evo Japan, Arslan. That's the first time we've actually talked. You know, he he met, he DM'd me, and his first DM is, "Hey, my name's Arslan Ash." Maybe you've heard of me. I beat me. <laughs> and he's like, um, Bilal told me that you can help me get to Eva Japan. Can you help? I'm like, yeah, I can help you. I go, by the way, I do know you. I've known you for a long time. <laughs> he's like, oh, okay, cool, man. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and then uh, he got, he basically needed help because he needed an invitation letter. And, he wasn't, and it was really difficult to get one because japan you know yeah. it's not just you know mark man and the rest of the people that are organizing this is that you have to think about the japanese organizers right so and, and it's difficult to communicate or whatever so um he needed the invitation letter for the visa and that's quite normal and you know arslan just messaged me now and he's asking for an invitation letter for for other tournament as well that he wants <laughs> to go to because it's it's because with the pakistani passport it's one of the worst passports in the world yeah that it's like is, it is five. Five. the hardest matchup in the tekken scene for sure right like that's yeah, so it's it's like bottom five. Like it, it's, it's. I I think it's even worse than Syria, man. Like it's just mm. bad, you know. And and uh, getting getting places, you're always gonna need a a, a visa. Yeah. Um And I think it, Dubai is like the easiest place for them to go to. But even then, you probably need one as well. But That's so anyway, brutal. he asked me, and I said, yeah, sure. And I was helping him to try and get one. And um, it was taking a long time. And he said, you know what? I just need to make my. I need to do my application now. Um. So he did it without the invitation, and it got declined. Oh. His visa to his visa to um, Japan got declined, and um, he goes, "I'm going to give up. There's no point." I go, "No, no, no, don't give up." I said, "We'll get the invitation letter. Do it again. Make another application." He goes, "Okay." So he managed to get the invitation letter finally, and on like the final day, he does the the, the interview and everything, and it got accepted, which was awesome. And then yeah. you know the story from there. You know he the the, the journey to to um japan was very difficult for him an absolute nightmare that story alone made me the biggest arslan fan before i even like watched the gameplay and knew what i was looking at right i was just like i can't even play a tournament if i miss like an hour of sleep and you're telling me he did all that like (laughs) yeah but when you see the 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 condition these guys play in you'll understand mate me and joker went to pakistan and we went to the maniacs arcade and this is not even in the summer this was like september now these guys don't have ac they don't have air conditioning in their arcade they have a fan 
but it's like a tournament, a dojo event, me and Joker entered. Mm -hmm. 130 people in a small arcade. It is blistering hot. And, you know, within like just five minutes of playing, I've already got a headache because I'm dehydrated. Oh my God. Uh, it's it's incredible. Like the, the, these guys play in those conditions every day, you know, and imagine being a, being a Pakistani, you know, if you can become the best player in Tekken or even up top 10 or something and you can travel internationally and compete, you're able to make enough money to live very easily. You know, the average salary in Pakistan is $200 a month, you know, um, 200 or $300 a month. If you're winning a tournament, which gives you a thousand to us, that's nothing for them. That's a lot of money. You know, yeah. um, you get, sal you get a salary from a sponsor, which is giving you 500 a month, you know, which is very normal for these guys. I mean, that is, you, you know, you're, you're doing all right. You can look after your family. You can like get, you know, get a place and stuff. You know, it's, 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 they're, they're playing for more. Yeah. You know, they're playing for more than we are. You know? and, and that they're playing to live. That makes a that that was actually I didn't want to make any assumptions, right? So I'm glad I'm glad you say that. Like the conditions are brutal physically. Everybody is sweating literally and trying to become the best, and it is literally life changing that they're competing for this. Like this is yeah. There, there's so much purpose behind it. Now, before Arslan blew up, did did it still have that same, I guess, intensity and value in the sense that like people were still playing to find this kind of monetary success uh, prior to the big worldwide exposure? There was more, um, there, there, were more there were tournaments within Pakistan, obviously. Um, and these guys were, if you look at this condition in Pakistan, how it is, everyone will think that these guys are like really good friends. Like, yeah, we're just friends. We play. Oh, well, let's go to locals and let's hold each other's hand. Mate, these guys don't like each other <laughs> a lot of people don't like each other like you think that it's like no and that is part of the reason why these guys are so strong as well because they they're playing to beat the shit out of each other they don't they don't like some of these they just the top players they don't like each other man yeah there's there's different factions you got to think about as well like there's different arcades and the arcades man they would be like legit beef man like no i you you guys think you're really good okay cool we're gonna come down and beat you and then they'll be like like really there'll be a lot of tension you know between a lot of these factions and stuff and now you have different training camps you got you got Bilal's training camp you got Arslan's and I don't think there's hate there but there is definitely that I want to beat the shit out of you mate yeah you know what I mean um man this interview that happened uh what is it the, this is the get score esports one. Oh yeah so the only time I did it with my sunglasses you know because I woke up like 10 minutes before that interview and I'm like ah I got interviewed like a million times that year you know like, yeah. like, tell us what's your song guy I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know what I can't even bother to put my sunglasses on I'll just leave my normal glasses on this time and it's the one time it gets like two million views <laughs> <on it. laughs> exposed, yeah. Uh, yeah, exposed so. but yeah um yeah so there is that intensity and these guys and I spoke to, I spoke to Arslan and he was like um we were better in Tekken Tag 2 than we are in, in, in Tekken 7. Really? And I okay. said, okay, okay, that's interesting. So I said, would you beat JDCR in in uh, Tag 2? He goes, yeah. Wow. I would beat him. Wow. And then he and then we went for we were in Korea and we went to a Korean barbecue place. Uh -huh. I was with JDCR and Arslan and Ulsan and like Joker and stuff. And and I said JDCR, I said, Jay, JDCR, you know what? You know what um Arslan said? He said he'd beat you in the first attempt in Tag 2. Uh, JDCR was like, hmm, okay. Like he didn't believe it. Like okay, yeah. but I was, I was like, yeah, I would. He just said to him, yeah, I'd beat you. Like let's do it. Let's 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 figure out a way. And this is something I'm trying to do, by the way, bro. I'm I'm gonna organize this. Right, get because... them get them nice and warmed up again, and really get that yes. set going. That would be cool. I'm, gonna, would be really, I'm really telling cool. everyone right now who watching the stream. I'm telling you, bro. I'm making that happen. Oh, that because would be JDCR. So fun, maybe people weren't around back then. You weren't around, but bro, I'm telling you, watch videos of Tag Two JDCR. This guy was unbeatable. He didn't lose a single tournament yeah. internationally. So that was Didn't the lose. first time I studied frames in Tekken, was uh, Tekken yeah. Tag 2. I played Double Law, and I was watching JDCR and Rip and Just Frame James. <laughs> that was my <laughs> upbringing in, in Tekken, like, base yeah. roots of competitiveness. <laughs> yeah, same, bro. We, uh, when I started uh, competitive for the first time, it was Tekken 6, and I was watching Rip, J um, Just Frame James. To this day, Just Frame James is still one of my favorite players ever yeah. because he's just so creative. Yeah, no. His, his stuff in Tag 2 is, is, is insane, and he was beating Koreans in Tekken 6 as well. It's crazy, yeah. but yeah, like... Yeah, so these guys were very strong in tag in tag two and Tekken five. You know, Tekken five was a game where they were all really good. Asim was telling me that, you know, um, there's guys like legends of the past that were that contributed to Pakistan being the way that they are now. There's a guy called Atif. This is like really like fucking. Work. I'm getting into like 
some shit that no one knows, yeah, outside yeah. of Pakistan. Yeah, yeah. The guy called Atif. No Atif, but a single, different Atif. It's a different Atif. This guy, so in Tekken 5, Pakistanis were like super good at Tekken. They're still as good as they are now, maybe better. Right. And in Tekken 5, there was a character that was broken beyond belief. And that character was Steve. Steve, 5.0 uh, Steve? 5.0 Steve. Uh. Um you know, his ability to be able to just kill you with one side step and a one two one or whatever. And, you know, th that that character was just, like, very, very strong, right? Mm -hmm. But imagine Asim told me that they, that this guy, Atif, he, um, he, we all knew how to play the game. We were very strong at it, you know. With, like, everyone's Arslan Ash, and you know, we, they're just practicing like crazy. But there's this one guy called Atif who plays Ganru and Eddie. And... It didn't, and, and these are not like typically strong, strong characters in Tekken 5, but right. everyone who tried to beat him, even by using Steve, was not able to touch him. Wow. That's how strong this guy is. And um, and it, I even spoke to Arslan and people like, saying, oh yeah, I heard about this guy. Asim was telling me, that, oh yeah, yeah, that guy was, that guy was sick, man. Um, so he, that this is like some more information, just to let you know that there were guys, you know, yeah. <laughs> who like you had that crazy level of defense in a game which is more, which is like broken basically you have yeah, characters yeah. that are broken and they just weren't able to uh they weren't able to touch him and you, when you can learn from those type of people you know he obviously had a very deep understanding of this game yeah right yeah then you obviously you're gonna you're gonna be able to improve and imagine they said bro we tried so much by using steve by using hayachi all these characters are really strong and we just couldn't beat him he just blocked everything <laughs> like he had a cheat code man he just blocked everything and and yeah so like it's it's crazy um they have these kind of people in the past that and it makes now it kind of makes more sense why these guys are so strong if you just have these really talented players you, one player can really bring up a community right when you look at like thailand for example thailand i think has become very strong now with the multiple players but i think having someone like book yes. is really important because book was even telling me that he what he's doing now is he is uh playing against people who are in thailand who are not typically strong but yeah. he's making them strong he's leveling he's up the community them. yeah he's leveling them up because he said i'm playing street fighter 6 now too much because no one is playing tekken 7 yeah and now i guess with tekken 8 people are playing now you got like these other players but he goes out he's playing against a lot of people and then there's other top players now in thailand as well that are doing the same thing so that community will level up because of a couple of players you know yeah um so I think it was with Pakistan, you just have these really strong players in the arcade. And when you when you look at players in the arcade compared to people who are not in the arcades who just came from online and stuff, it is kind of I can no, I can notice the difference. Oh, you can you can feel that difference. Absolutely. Yeah. Like mm. it is it is so insane, right? Even like in the US where I feel like the the exposure gap between the old heads and the, and the new kids is very rare you fight somebody who came from the offline era and it is a noticeable difference even if i'm winning there are so many times it feels like there's this poise you know there's this there's this quiet composure that is just so strong and it's like it, it's weird it's like an aura yeah and it's because and i asked, asked him like what is what is the reason behind that and he goes look when you have a coin yeah mm -hmm. and you're a kid you need to make sure you ain't got that many coins. You got to make sure that coin goes as far as possible in an arcade. You know, you're going to put that coin in and that's your turn. If you lose, that coin is gone and you're going to have to wait and play again and like wait for your turn again. And you're going to be salty because you just lost. But um, you put that coin in and you try to win as many games as possible. Yeah. But you have, you basically let that coin go as far as possible. It's, it's a different type of environment, isn't it? Yeah. So that's essentially what's, what's, um, what's happening there and you know you want to make sure that you preserve your coin and then you have like the the the, the whole rivalries between the players as well i think that the situation in pakistan is that way um and you know i think kokoma is easy in a chat as well he went to pakistan you got to experience you know kind of the 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 way that these guys play and uh, when i first went to pakistan when, when i went there to for for tekken for a tekken trip i went there and i saw i went to arslan's gaming um his his boot camp and he had his team ashes people there right so imagine you got atif but dawood sajawal you have uh, who's a top yoshi mm -hmm. you have all these play arc who is who was definitely the best allies to play in the world at the time even kira said yeah he's better, better than me he's the best plays miguel as well black for zine you have all these amazing world-class tournament champion level players and they're chilling in one room and yeah. when you play and joker we, we arrived at 12 okay um kasim kasim mir picked us up right mm -hmm. made us breakfast so now it's 1 a.m. and I'm like, bro, I'm going to sleep, man. I'm tired. And then Joker's like, cool. So I go. 
and I go to my hotel or whatever. And Joker stays there and plays until 7 a.m. Jeez. Non-stop. And he goes, you know how it was when you play? You press, you play first to 10, first to 20, first to 30, whatever. Mm-hmm. That guy gets up and lies down because there's a fucking bed in his... There, there are beds in the gaming room, in, <laughs> in the thing. So these guys sleep, wake up, check in, sleep, eat, wake up, check in. That's what wow. they do. I literally saw a guy, he was sleeping. I don't even know if this guy is the top, some top Asuka player. He's just sleeping. He gets up. He kind of washes his face. He plays some Tekken. He eats and goes back into the bed. That is... You know, it's just, that's how they play, <laughs> man. So like, bro, can you, like, we we struggle in the, in America and Europe to to play offline a lot. You know, if we, we're lucky, we meet up once a week or twice a week, you know. Yeah. But these guys are playing optimally versus the best players in the world constantly, you know, yeah. in, in like on PS4. And it's because of them they they grind so much that they that they're able to be so good you know they're in practice all the time and um you have access to all these strong players like you know joker was saying that if you wanted to play versus a certain matchup there'll be a top player that'll be they'll just turn up and play and if you have someone like artif and dawood who you can play with all the time you can learn so much i was i, I was there i learned a lot as well i mean i'm yeah i wasn't even there to play tech and i was there to do other stuff but I was there and I played like long sets and I was like, wow, I'm, I'm learning. And Dawood is like super good as well. Cause he'll, he'll like talk to you and let you know, like, like you need to do this, you need to do this. And it's, it's sick, man. The environment you should definitely go if you have the opportunity. To, yeah. Um, you know, like that, man, that is so, so, so cool. Uh, yeah. I was, I was and that's saying, why, that's why I, I told, that's why I told, um, Kokoma that he needs to go, you know, mm. he, he needed to go there and he did. And he, he trained a lot, man. So it's, um, it's it's crazy but yeah when it comes to um to the way these guys play it's very much like there's a lot of emphasis on reactions which we don't have i feel like in in uh, europe and in america we don't talk about reactions a lot but in korea and in pakistan they talk about it a lot i told this i said this to, to, to joker i said this to um to go and stuff as well like th- there's there's a big emphasis on reactions and 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 you know all that kind of stuff. And if you look at Ni, I I, I interviewed Ni in Thailand. I uh, said, what do you think about the Pakistani play style? This was in 2019, right? So they, it was the Tekken World Tour after Arslan won EVO twice. And he's like, he feels like Pakistan is a lot about space control. Like they don't, they don't do a lot of sidestepping, but they have amazing, crazy pressure by, with their space control and their punishment is perfect. Um, they, they just punish really well on whiff and on block, you know, and they'll, they have great space control, you know? So, and I agree with that for sure. I definitely agree with that analysis. But they, but they also have crazy reactions because they're playing all the time. And you'll notice actually, if a Pakistani player doesn't play for a while, and I know this was Asim, it's so clear. He mm. becomes one of the best players in the world if you if he's playing all the time. If he stops playing, this guy, he just becomes a scrub man. It's so <laughs> weird. Because if I don't play for like a month or two months or whatever, I'll still pick up the game and still be able to beat people because I don't really emphasize my uh, react reactions too much. I just yeah. emphasize more kind of match up, mind game, that, that, that type of stuff, right? Yeah. Um, whereas these guys are just looking out. They're trying to, you know, react to everything. All sign is similar as well. All sign, mm-hmm. low high. These guys, yes. they have cracked reactions. But their reaction time isn't actually better than our reaction times. It's no. just because they've got themselves accustomed to the um to the moves right it's i did a reaction time test with these guys and i i actually beat ulsan and lohai you know okay yeah 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 but but it's not uh but they've trained their reactions versus i mean that's what pakistanis do too Mm -hmm. you know no the sense i got too is it's so deeply instinctual like their their eyes see something on screen and there are so many layers of built-in muscle and like neurological memory that we yeah. just do not have meeting up once a month for six hours when they do that every day, like it's just another day at work. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're playing all the time, and and, and I, every time I ask ask him, because I have to ask him multiple times, like, dude, like, why are these guys so good? He goes, Hassan, they play all the time. They're yeah, always yeah. playing. They <laughs> always play. Like they play, play, play. And I'm like, but I'm thinking to my, but, but people in Europe play a lot as well. Like they do. Yeah, we, we play yeah. every day, but it's like, but it's different. <clears throat> these guys are playing offline in that environment. Um, you know, and they are specifically training their reactions. I'll tell you right now that I've asked Pakistanis how they train their reactions, mm-hmm. and uh, they won't tell me. <laughs> Some of them won't tell me. Wow. But I asked Awais Liaket because he's a very nice guy, and he was the best in Pakistan. No one could touch him. There's videos of him beating Arslan as well in uh-huh. Tag Two on 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 YouTube. If you're at Waste Liaket versus Arslan Ash, you'll actually also see a season one Tekken Seven tournament where Awais won with Josie versus Kazumi in season one. Um, 
so Oasis Lockett, uh, he told me because I, I I was with him um, when I went to Pakistan a couple of years ago. He said the way you train your reactions because he had cracked reactions as well mm-hmm. is you go to practice mode, you set a move like let's say Asuka down one plus two. People say it's reactable, but it's kind of on the cusp, you know. Maybe that move that's like 21, 22 frames. Right. <clears throat> you you set the computer to do it a hundred, like to just do it raw, and then just block it a hundred times. Just block it. But Zafina down three, same thing. Just block it a hundred times in practice mode. Wow. You don't have to change the timing. Don't do any of that. Just literally have the computer do the move and block it a hundred times. One. And then two. You just you just do it. You keep just doing getting it. your eyes to look at the animation. No timing change, no like uh like anticipation yeah. no dashes just literally looking at the move yeah just looking at the move because you're not trying to you know, the timing changes that that stuff don't matter it's all about um, the only way you can react to these moves is by understanding the animation once your eyes understand your animate the animation of the move your 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 muscle memory is going to start to kick in and what you did in practice about 100 times in a row is going to start to work you know now i did this and kwis did this as well because i told mm-hmm. him about this and he said bro when i did it i i blocked every safina town three yeah yeah and then he goes but when i stopped when i when i stopped training when i stopped playing against safina and then i came across safina again then it became difficult he it was gone it. It's, ah so it's it was gone it's it's only it, it, it exists within that culture of we play every day we play this long and, it, and yeah. they maintain I mean, they it. play for hours like 10 yeah 10 hours a day versus multiple characters that kind of grinding you know that's for them is this is their job you know yeah so they're playing constantly and um because of that they're constantly in practice that means that if arslan doesn't play for a while you know if he's not if he doesn't if he stops grinding for a bit all of a sudden he's gonna find it very difficult to, to win but when he when when he grinds you can see the difference in his game style you yeah. can see the difference in not just him but other people Bilal is exactly the same like pakistanis doesn't matter who because they all have the same culture they say they have the same approach to tekken right so if any of them stop playing for a while and i've seen this with asin because there was a moment where this guy was the highest ranked player in Europe. He stopped playing for a year because mm-hmm. he had some personal problems. This guy was struggling at Vanquisher. <laughs> Vanquisher Tekken 7 or Tekken Tag 2. Tekken Tag 2. Yeah, Tag 2. Wow. Yeah. That was my but, peak but, rank. That's crazy. <laughs> 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 he he struggled at Vanquisher and I saw him and I beat him and I'm like, this can't be Asim because his name, his his tag on um on Steam and on PS was Lahore Champ. And I'm like, this this can't be Asim. Like, Same city as Arslan. It's, yeah, they're all from Lahore. Yeah, okay. obviously, like Arslan, they're all from Lahore. Yeah, um, Atif Bhat's actually from Gujarwala, which is my mum's city, which oh, is okay. the city neighboring to Lahore. So, Pakistan is the two Tekken playing nations, those uh, cities of Pakistan are were just Lahore and and um and Gujarwala, but then you also have Faisalabad, which is where I think Dawood was from, and you got some other top players in Faisalabad as well, really strong players. That's actually the city where Awais Honey apparently learned how to play um akuma with the down twos and stuff uh, uh, i can spell okay. it to you don't worry i'll the second city Good. thank you yeah this is this is the city of atif where he's from and these and are the, the reason why atif, big yeah tekken cities so yeah you have Feslabad as well which is that guy um the first city that that guy posted oh, okay um that also has um you know good good players Feslabad. <clears throat> um, a lot of lot of good players from from that city, but Gujarwala is like yeah, some really good players. There's even a Dragonov player that moved a young guy um, from Gujarwala to UK. He's studying studying here, and he's like winning tournaments with Dragonov. He's actually a Dragonov main, so it, it's okay. He's allowed to play the character. Um, <laughs> right, right. But, it's like the fear of silence thing. We're like, he's been here, he's been here, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's he gets the pass. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he's beating people as well, and no one's really heard of him in Pakistan, but he, he's beating people in the UK, you know. Devilster is, I think he's from Lahore, I'm not sure. Okay, um, okay. But yeah, you know, anyway, it's those three cities that, you know, mainly the cities that people are playing. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, Pakistan, man, that's, that's how it is, isn't it? And there's so many players, um, even now there's like young players. And that's the thing, when when me and uh, Ulsan and CBM, everyone, we went to that tournament takedown, um, they got to see how the community is like, um, there was that that takedown event. We had a a well, there actually wasn't any sign up limit. Well, there might have been. It, I think we had a cap of like five hundred, right? But five hundred, um, you know, we thought, okay, they're going to sign up. It's free sign up, by the way. So we're guessing that people are probably going to DQ. We're going to end up with three hundred people, right? Right, right. But we didn't end up with three hundred people. They ended up with all five hundred, 
with a waiting list of 100 or 200. So there was a potential 700 people that were going to turn up to one tournament in Lahore, right? Mm -hmm. Which is insane. Yeah. Um, so you look at um, when Osan saw this, he said to me, I understand now why Pakistan is the best and why they're probably likely to con continue being the best. Yeah. It's because you guys have so many players and you have younger players. In Korea, he said, we struggle to get 90 people for a major. If there's like a Korea master event, I'm excited. I'm, I'm actually curious to see how many people are going to turn up for the one happening in June. Because also I was like, we just, we can't get players to turn up offline to tournaments. Wow. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to Pakistan, these guys are having to having to you know having to cap tournaments at 500 yeah <laughs> rip and rip and steve have been to uh rev major unfortunately there's no rev major this year but i've never been right but I, I heard yeah. that it yeah i heard it's so crazy that you know when you have these kind of tech and personalities like commentators or you know wh whoever you know like uh, players you'll you'll have these uh, people from they're so passionate you'll just get people constantly asking you for autographs and pictures and stuff and it's like a good vibes you know uh, he said that S steve was struggling to walk towards the commentary booth because there were just too many people asking for pictures and, and, and autographs and stuff and yeah the pa that passion right yeah and he goes that pakistan event in lahore was so similar it was like the same but just in pakistan uh... the passion the asking for autograph. i couldn't go i was trying to go to the commentary booth and i couldn't get people were just asking me for pictures and you know autographs and all stuff it's very similar <laughs> And with with the amount of these guys were cheering in the crowd for for the tournament, like it's he goes, it was rev major vibes, you know. Right. So yeah, like it's um, these guys are passionate, man. This is so incredible, and I'm learning so much too, right? I'm so uneducated, so I'm so great. You were sharing this. I was looking up the population of Lahore is 11.13 million, and Seoul is a uh, 9.7 million, right? Mm. So so it makes sense not only just there's such a huge population. That one of my big theories, I think, on like um successful esports scenes is just. Uh, straight population density like how how many gamers can you put in one area who yeah. really really care right <laughs> and like yeah uh, you describe the arcade scene you describe the beef you know the passion for fighting over like just the one coin you get to play in the arcade or like you know the few coins you have mm. and with the greatest like the the the, the explosion of popularity how this is a life-changing opportunity to become good at tekken like that is yeah intense. it's life-changing it's very intense, man. You can do, they're playing for more. Like I said, they're not playing just to be the best and 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 have that kind of yeah. I I'm playing for my legacy, so people remember me. Like it's not even about that. They're like I'm playing for my fucking kids, bro. I can feed my kids. <laughs> like, I can feed their got, kids. Yeah, you bro. know a lot of these players. You don't know they're married. They have kids, man. Yeah. Like you know, like m multiple these players. I didn't, I was like, damn, I didn't even know. Sometimes they're like, oh yeah, I didn't even know this guy was married and had kids. But it's you know, in Pakistan, the culture is also you get married quite young as well, and it's like part of the culture. Yeah. Um, it's, it's common to get married. My, my cousin, he's not even living in Pakistan. He's just Pakistani living in Birmingham. And he got married when he's 18. You know, like it's, it's, it's common, you know, to get to marry young. And, and it's seen as a really good thing too. Like it's, it's um, like you see what Arslan, when Arslan got married recently, like he, he was telling me that like, man, it was the best thing that could have happened to me. Like I yeah. got this really supportive wife now. And, and all the Pakistanis, when I talk to them, you know, they say that, yeah, just, just the best thing that you can do. You know, the married really Tekken good. buff too. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, right? the buff, yeah. man. <laughs> so it's uh yeah it's it's a big thing these guys are playing for more man and um the other thing that i didn't that i didn't mention which i mentioned before when i've done interviews about on this is like the reason what the reason why tekken and it is is a big thing in pakistan is because those were the cabinets that were brought down to pakistan by arcade owners because they were cheap mm. the, uh, the tekken and kof specifically were cheaper and easier to get a hold of back in the old arcade era uh, those those arcade cabinets were a lot less expensive than street fighter street fighter was apparently ex very expensive you, you know it was difficult to get your hands on the street fighter cab um but tekken and kof were cheaper to get a hold of and and because of that you know you look at places like mexico why do they play kof same thing you know ah. kof it's this poor country but kof is um, it was an it was an easy cabinet to get a hold of. They were cheaper, so these arcade owners, they're business owners at the end of the day. They're trying to make money. They don't want to spend too much. So you have Morocco, which is a, a poor country as well, relative to like you know Euro other European countries, and you know Morocco insane at KOF. You know Pakistan insane at KOF. Yeah. Um, Mexico. So all these uh, all these places, and then you have um, Peru. Which we reach like this really strong Tekken playing nation, and you're Pakistan. Pakistan is also, you know, strong Tekken playing nation as well. So like those cabinets were a lot more, um, a lot more uh, cheap 
you know, to get a hold of. Um, and then I guess um, in the end, like even like now, for example, if you go to the arcades, there will actually be cabinets. There'll be makeshift cabinets that these guys built out of wood and stuff. And then they'll right. just put like a console inside or yeah. a PC or whatever. That's kind of what you, you don't need to do more than that. You don't need to, you don't need to buy a cabinet anymore. And right. that's why in Tekken 7, it, the 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 um, 7.0 came out on the arcades because they actually, Namco mentioned that they used to make uh, half or more of their money of their income from arcades and then the other half came from console sales gotcha. whereas um now that i mean it doesn't make sense does it because of you know pc and you know i think things have moved on they this is the first time tekken's been released in its point zero version on 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 um on console instead of being on the arcades <clears throat> I see, I see, gotcha. Um, mm. I asked it briefly, but I wanted to double check. Um, you said, mm -hmm. like, we talked about, like, the salaries and the, monies they were, the money they were competing for. Um, and clearly in Tekken 7, that's a big thing. Was this an incentive that existed back in Tag 2, back in Tekken 6? Or is it something that's pretty new <coughs> relative to Arslan's come up? I think at the end of the day, um, it, it would have it would have existed then as well, because uh, even though tournament prize pools weren't amazing, they they were trying to go to Tekken, uh, international Tekken Tag 2 tournaments. I see. So OK, OK, OK. There was a tournament, Head Stomper. 20, you know, I, you might have heard of it. Head Stomper yeah, is like one of the major. And that's been happening since Tag 2. Um, and I've been going there since Tag 2. One of my favorite tournaments. Um, Headstop is in Sweden, and sometimes it happens in Denmark. Then Malmo in Sweden and Denmark are like right next to each other anyway. They're like neighbors, so uh, they switch between the two. But normally it's in Sweden, and there was uh, this time it was in Sweden, 2015, I think, mm -hmm. in Tag Two. And I didn't know, but Gassim Mir, he actually he actually signed up for that tournament. Oh, back in and, Headstomper in Tag Two, in Tag Two. But he did his visa application, <clears throat> and. Um, I guess he was waiting for his visa, whatever. He had every intention to come down, but then he didn't bother to check if his visa got accepted. It uh, did get accepted, uh, but he just assumed it didn't get accepted, yeah. and then he didn't come. But uh, again, another opportunity for a and you know who else was at that tournament? Ooh. JDCR. Oh man, he was in Europe, living in Europe with Kaipa at the time. Wow. So when I tell you that there would have been an opportunity for an, a, you know, a, a Pakistani to make a, a make a scene and shock the world, that would have been another opportunity. Um, and because JDCR was winning everything in Tag Two, he won that tournament quite easily. Uh, sorry, Fergus. He he beat that ass, man, in <laughs> grand finals. Um, but you know, it's it was normal. We, we we see this guy in grand finals of a tag two tournament. He's gonna win. But Kasim beat JDCR in, in in at Rev Major in Tekken Seven. So I, I would definitely feel like this guy has the skills to do the same thing in tag two as well. Yeah. You know? So there were multiple opportunities for these guys, and they were trying to come down to tag two tournaments. And I think going somewhere like Evo, you know, I think you still win a decent amount of money, especially for Pakistan. You know, like. As a Pakistani, that money goes a long way. So, yeah, that that passion to to compete and to get good, to make a name for yourself, to to compete at the best level, it it might not have just been all money incentive. It might have of just course. been also uh, just because they want to be the best. You know, yeah, become very yeah. competitive people. Yeah, no, that yeah. is so so cool to get caught up on not just Arslan's come up, but is. Every time I hear somebody talk about Pakistan from Pakistan, it's always, oh, I'm not the best. There's someone way better. And then they actually are nasty, right? Like, that's such a funny occurrence, that like a recurring pattern. It's like this legend from before is so, so, so good. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, there's so many players, and that's, that's the reason why I think that we're, you know, Pakistan is in a good spot because those players are grinding constantly. Um, they all want to become the next Arslan. I think Arslan's inspired a generation. Yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of people even in the uk you know there's a lot of pakistanis in the uk by the way you know right, if you right. think about it I, it's it's weird because we don't have we don't have any interaction with pakistan until tekken 7 but me gosain blackbeard you know blackbeard's not from the uk but he's in europe right me gosain joker blackbeard um who else man there's so many like pakistanis uh, that play uh, tekken in in europe but we don't we didn't go to pakistan it's not because of pakistan you know it's Correct, in spite yeah. of that, you know, we, yeah. we just, I don't know what it is, man. Like, wh why did <laughs> I get into Tekken as a Pakistani, you know? Uh, uh, you know, is, is it in my blood, bro? Like, what the hell, you know? Like, <laughs> maybe it uh, is. Maybe, maybe it, it is. fucking is. Yeah, maybe just Pakistanis love that shit. I don't know. Um, I got into it because I was like, man, yo, this game looks sick. Yo, Law, Bruce Lee. Yeah. I think maybe Pakistan just love Bruce Lee or some shit. And they're like, yeah, let's play that game, man. Law and shit. I don't know. But it's, it's crazy, man. Like, uh, how... You know, because when obviously Pakistan, 
came onto the scene in 2019, a lot of people were looking at me. They're like, oh, because I was talking about it before. And then people made fun of me. <laughs> and they made fun of Asim as well. For Asim, Asim said it publicly, and I said it as well, that these guys are going to be the Koreans that they play offline. And everyone was like, ah, shut up. You know? And right, actually, right. It's, it's fucked up as well, because there was a lot of resistance to accepting these guys were the best. Of course, or right. were really good. Yeah. There was there was a couple of guys who used to be my subscribers on Twitch, bro. It's mad. When when Arslan won that OUG game, uh, game event, and I'm like, Oh, these guys, they, they were making excuses. They were knee fanboys and they're making excuses like, oh, knee, da, 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 da. And I was like, no, mate, they just won, you know? Yeah. And these, I, I didn't say anything. All I said is, no, he just outplayed me. Yeah. And they call me racist, man. I was like, wow. yeah, you're racist. Fuck you. And then they, they just like, don't watch my stream anymore. I hate this guy. Oh, my blah, God. Blah, blah. It was That's crazy, insane. man. Look, I'm telling you, there was a lot of resistance. And even, I'm not going to call him names because I don't want to, because I don't want to be that guy. But there were some people in, in the United States who were like, Stop saying that Pakistan is good. It's just Arslan. And then all of a sudden you have Atif Butt and Awais going, walking into Japan against, you know, to the master event with all the best players in the world from Korea and Japan. And they get number one and number two <laughs> in, in Pakistan. You know, yeah, they're using Akuma. Okay. But everyone in America was saying Akuma was Cite. Okay. So that's a Cite character that won that tournament. Okay. Um, but the Tokyo Masters, you know, are different Awais one. And at that point, it's like, okay, a bit harder to, say that it's just Arslan now. Um, but it's a stupid thing to say anyway, because how can someone be so good and not have a good scene, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, like like then... truly, like it is it is kind of anybody who's ever done any gaming anywhere, <laughs> it is so rare to actually be the one person that comes up on your own. Like that is such an anomaly, right? That is like yeah. in any esport, any kind of discipline, it's a community, right? Like, and I think it's really cool mm -hmm. that Arslan has been so... From I, from the beginning of every anything I've ever saw of him, he's always built up the community uh, on top of his accomplishments, which is so cool to me. Yeah, for sure, man. And then then Bilal won the LCQ, which right. was a crazy run. You right. know that that LCQ was LCQs are always my favorite tournaments of the year. I always yeah. love watching LCQs. You know, Joe Crush did amazingly this time, and that was an, an incredible run. It was LCQs are just really fun to watch. Um, and 2019 LCQ was probably the most stacked LCQ ever because there was so many. Because it was in Thailand, there's a lot of Pakistanis that are able to go to Thailand. It's not difficult for them to go there, right? So, right. or getting to Asia in general, any place, even Japan, it's not as hard as it is to get to Europe and America. So, there were quite a few Pakistanis there. Actually, if you don't know, there was Hira Malik was there. Yes. Uh, Essen Ali was there. Away, uh, well, Away's already qualified. Did he qualify? Yeah, he qualified. Um, Artif was there. Artif Butt was there in the LCQ. Um, Bilal. There were a ton of Pakistanis there. The John. The John was there too. The John, oh and it was God. so weird because, mate, there were these Pakistanis there, and uh, and we the commentators always do this thing where we like we guess two names of people who's gonna win the LCQ. Right. No one guessed Bilal. But everyone right. was like the John, the John, the John, some someone else. But it was crazy because. Um, you know, you have AK, you got like Book and all these guys and the, the ton of Japanese, but Kage Maru and blah, 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 fighting spirit. So it was stacked as fuck in that, in that LCQ, man. And, and it was the first time I actually saw Japan when they're rooting for their boy. They just get so loud. It was crazy. I thought yeah. they were like, you know, these kind of quiet people. No, they went crazy, man. And um, they got so loud when Kage Maru played the John that the John just froze up. It was because oh. the Japanese were screaming. And I, and I was like, mate, I said to I said to Arslan because Arslan Khan was standing next to me. I'm like, mate, say something to him, man. Like, give him some coaching. The guy's shit in his pants. And they're like, oh, okay. Like, they <laughs> they weren't really experienced for you when it comes to tournaments. You know, like international that kind of environment of an international being behind you uh, and they're screaming for the other guy and there's yeah. like this kind of rowdiness. Like, m maybe that happens in the arcades <laughs> there, but like when it's international, they kind of just rose up a it's bit. It's so different still... when it's international. Oh my goodness, it really it's is. so different. And that's what they weren't used to in 2019. They weren't yeah. really used to it too much, you know. And uh, yeah, so I think, um, you know, they've learned a lot. And to, to this point now, we fast forward to 2024. These guys have obviously won so many things now. And they've, they're definitely used to that. You know, we saw what happened with Frazine as well when Kaiser played him, you know. It's yeah, like, yeah, everyone yeah. Everyone's screaming and, you know, you, you Americans are rowdy, man. You get you get loud <laughs> for your boys, which is cool, isn't it? But yeah, these guys, they'll, they'll learn. And I hope to see more Pakistanis that... Um, you know, young guys traveling, hopefully with second night, if they get sponsored and stuff. It was really funny fighting Farzine, uh, cause he's the one that eliminated me from that same tournament. And we mm -hmm. were both so nervous because I had, that was my first major. So mm -hmm. we were both such a, <laughs> we were both so green and I could feel like the mistakes we were both making. We were both just like panicking and like shaking <laughs> and uh, you know, we shook hands after and we were both like, Oh my goodness, what did we just do? It was such a funny experience. <laughs> 
yeah, yeah, that guy is good, man. Fazine, you know, like he's talented, and mm-hmm. and you know he's 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 doing good now as well. He's not even playing the Akuma. people. Say, oh, he's only winning because of Akuma. He's actually doing pretty good now as well without Akuma. Anyway, he's a strong player, man. So I personally yeah. love to see that because I was a big Akuma hater, but I love to believe in the players being able to adapt. Like I love that story, right? Like you know, I, I was a Noctis player, so people were always saying the same things. So I appreciate yeah. when Super Akuma is doing well on Lee. I appreciate mm-hmm. when. Uh, all these other players are switching off and still finding success. That's really cool to me personally. You know? Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's good, man. At the end, end of the day, like, I guess we're, we're realizing that there had to be some degree of fundamentals, even if you're playing a Kuma, you, know, yeah, you have to yeah. be able to duck rings. You have to be able to do this, you know, punish and all that kind of stuff. And then and it's just a matter of adaptation at that point and just relearning the game, you know, but yeah, there's a, there's a ton of players in Pakistan that are doing really well. Um, I'm just excited for Eva Japan, like yeah. just to see who's going to be like taking it there. Um, the next chapter I think with this the, the way the game is now it's going to be difficult for anyone to say that they're going to win but um, yeah we'll, we'll see what happens man. yeah I think um, based on what you've been telling me just about the culture of the, the way they practice the way they grind I feel like there's I'm almost unconcerned completely about their the, the Pakistani outlook on Tekken 8 like their, their competitive performance and with that kind of practice I feel like it doesn't matter what game it is you know mm. uh, yeah no I, I don't I don't think so. I think that there's there's going to be some players that will struggle, mm-hmm. um, like just in in the initial stages of the game. I think with sure. Arslan's play style, which is so reaction and defense based, um, like he's obviously not liking the game at all because yeah. he's forced into situations where he's guessing for his life, and that happens a lot more in this game than it does in that it did in second seven. Yes, uh, even with buff buff movement, if you buff the, if you buff tracking and 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 like just the frames on everything, it doesn't matter if your movement's better. Like like Joey said um you know on the podcast he was like if you block running to heat smash down back to four like what can you do it doesn't matter if you're arslan or me or anyone you're you're taking a mix up in that situation you right, know? right right like um so that's what he doesn't like at the moment but yeah i think you're right when you said that you know artif but for example and even you're watching devil star on uh, on stream right now as well mm-hmm. this is someone who you know he beat cbm in the in the gin mirror you know in tekken 7 right uh, i think it was five five two and five zero or something like the guy's gin is really good and we're gonna be able to see him at the um the bars gauntlet so there's a tournament happening may 11th and 12th the b-a-a-z b-a-a-z gauntlet yeah it's um it's gonna be uh, it's not confirmed like what the format we're gonna use is but it, it could be um but it might be a swiss format could be a um double elimination or, sorry not double, um a round robin so we'll see what it's going to be but it's the but it's going to have knee low high um you use going as well so for, for internationals and then obviously the pakistanis are going to be there too so that's definitely going to be like a, a good look at what's going to happen um oh the level of pakistan because there's gonna be so many pakistanis at that event right so yeah um, Evo Japan will be a good look as well, but we're not going to have a lot of Pakistanis there. I think people are struggling to get visas at the moment. Unfortunate, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is cool, man. Thank you so much for the mm. uh, the history lesson. This is a, uh, I'm I'm such a big fan of this theory, and and I don't know if you saw on Twitter, but how it kind of all came about is a uh, there's a uh, American who lives in Korea, uh, big in the League of Legends scene, LS, and mm-hmm. Speed Kicks tweeted that um, NA's problem or strength however you want to frame it is that they're really good at finding new styles of play but really bad at refining existing styles of play so na often has that edge either in a new game or a new meta or things like that and then the other countries that are refiners like these guys grinding eight to ten hours a day blocking one move going to Mm -hmm. bed doing another Mm -hmm. first to 30 right tend to Mm -hmm. shine in the end and i think you see that in the koreas the chinas the pakistans for tekken and Mm -hmm. uh and kof right um Mm. and so this conversation came about because i think he's interested in the history of that so i i reached out because i was a big fan of his and was like i would love to have a conversation with him but also i think that if you find the time or opportunity he would probably love to hear from you because you have just such a deep in-depth understanding of how pakistan has operated in the context of korea and japan as well in the tekken scene so Mm. if that's a if that's something on your radar i definitely recommend it i think it'd be a cool conversation yeah yeah i mean i don't know who this guy is but i mean if you if if he wants to talk i mean just let him know i'm, yeah. I'm always down to talk i love talking about this stuff and talking about tekken in general i think um 
uh yeah what speaker said about the the play styles thing i, I don't i don't know uh and maybe you know <laughs> i don't know i don't know maybe speaker says a lot of things i don't know yeah, <laughs> maybe yeah. you know i mean um, it checks out in my understanding of at least seeing like league of legends the americans love finding new builds they love finding new uh like mm. like team compositions and things like that um but then you see them like make more mistakes mechanically or in a lot of the fundamental situations which uh at least in in I don't think it was the case as much in Tekken 7 and, and the other Tekkens. Again, I'm not educated mm -hmm. enough to make that kind of statement. But historically, in American esports, that's tended to be the case. So that was yeah, I think, I think um, my, my understanding has been for a while when it comes to, um, to America is that um, not all of the players, by the way. I think with people like Anakin and 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 Joey and and these guys, I think they don't they don't have this problem. But I think people um, they 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 overthink way too much yeah. like, they make it more complicated than it has to be like yes. when i was spoken when i spoke to lohai once um because he 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 lost the first game in tournament and he won very convincingly the next two i said what did you do like and it wasn't it wasn't you know e equals mc squared and you know the second law of thermodynamics it was it was <laughs> it, it was um i i he was ducking so i did more mids yeah yeah you know, it's, it's something sometimes so the tech. Yeah, and if you talk to Pakistanis too, it's the same thing. They're not they're not overthinking. They like they make they 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 use pokes. They they get information on the reaction from the opponent. They'll dash in their face. They'll they'll see what they do. You know, Bronson was also really good at this as well. Like he didn't yeah. overthink. He was just really good. And I spoke because I mean Bronson used to speak a lot in tag two when I was learning the game. He actually taught a lot me and Fergus like a lot of different things. Even though he was a fucking troll like he would he would actually sometimes teach us good shit you know and yeah, he's like, yeah. sometimes a really good really good thing to do is just dash in your opponent's face and just see what they do yeah and once you've done it enough and once you've done when you when you have all these kind of information finding tools like down forward ones or whatever right um just see how your opponent reacts to them how they wake up and all this kind of stuff then th this automatically as, as a player you'll start to just remember all these things and then it'll become uh, you know natural to you that oh my opponent's doing this, this is how i need to adapt and then it's just a matter of knowing your own character enough to know how to adapt versus your opponent right and i think there's there's not like there's many different ways you can play this game but there doesn't need to be um you don't need to like find out you know um you have to go on this mad journey to to find out the most optimal way to play. I think in this game it's gonna be difficult. We're just a new game, right? Right. But you know, ev people are allowed to have different play styles. You yeah, know? And, yeah. And, and and there's many different play styles that will work. The aggressive play style of Atif, the more defensive play style of Ni, and all of these can work in their own ways. And that's the beautiful thing about Tekken. You know, yeah. is that it's such a diverse game in the way that you can play it. Right. Um, there is no one optimal way to play. You know. Yeah. So. Um, even though it's a good thing to try and find different ways to play, I think you should also understand if you if you're a player that is more um, edging towards the defensive side, and you're more comfortable and and you like playing that way, attacking, then just do that. You know, don't force yourself to play a, a play style which is against your against your natural kind of disposition. You know. Yeah, so, um, I completely agree. I think it's yeah. I think it's really cool, and it's funny that you mentioned it's so simple. Sometimes my entire training i think like from tekken from 2022 to 2024 was to mm -hmm. log on and play online or play sets and my only yeah. job was to look at the screen and breathe it was <laughs> there was no it was it was no more strategy no more no more theory crafting uh i was getting coaching from speed at the time and he was saying you just gotta look at the screen and breathe bro <laughs> yeah. and, and that changed everything that was the first time i started like winning things it was like you just got to trust yeah. that you are building up the skills you need to, which is what, you know, these Pakistanis and Koreans are doing with their reaction practice and the straight up experience and then letting that letting your body carry that experience. Right. Because the brain slows you down, you know. Mm. And so I think that's really, really cool insight that you've added to that is that really you're in a fight. You just got to fight. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. You can't you can't overthink, man. You're overthinking. You're going to start hesitating. And stuff, yeah. You know what I mean, like, um, yeah, yeah, you're right, man. And I think you, you would have noticed when once you stopped overthinking certain situations and you just go in there and you just do your thing, uh, especially with Noctis, you know, who, you know, you just need that those few moves. You just need fundamentals and a few moves. You know? <laughs> like you saw how CBM did it. Yeah. It's just so, you know, so it, clean and so clean. So simple so yeah that's it man so yeah it's, it's, it's cool man I, i'm i'm excited to see how um how this is gonna how this is gonna, this game's gonna develop because it's yeah. so crazy right now so but yeah thank yeah, you we'll so see. much for getting on i know we've been on for like an hour uh if i have more questions i'll probably message you if that's cool but this no was worries, a, man yeah for sure yeah and looking forward to your next heat speak podcast i was watching it on stream uh, i told i sent everybody over there and uh, i was like yeah this is this is 
this is my favorite kind of tech and stuff. You know, my, my brand is more talking than playing anyways. So I love the yeah. podcast. I love these conversations. I love the history. That's I'm really looking fun. forward to what you do next with it, man. Yeah, come. You, you can join the one, next one, bro. I was oh, actually going to ask you anyway. Yeah, Sweet. yeah. I'll, I'll see. I'll, I've already asked. Um, I think the next episode will be with the Koreans. And I'd, I'd love to have you on as well. Oh, so boy. We can, that'll be we great. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll let you know about that, man. But yeah, man. Nice one. Um, enjoy your stream. And if you have any more questions, let me know, man. Cheers, man. Thank you so much. Uh, nice and one, everybody that was spag, definitely check out his stuff. I'll link it. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, man. <laughs>